Data representation is how computers represent something, not using the thing itself. So a drawing, word, number, graphic, audio recording, image or video can all be used to represent things. A person, tree, maths test, location, or an overseas flight details. And each of these representations has characteristics or properties. Gender, age, species, test score, address, flight time. And these can be associated with each representation. Now in language, we call these adjectives. And in digital technologies, these are referred to as categorical data, where the data is represented in discrete categories. But they allow us to generalize or abstract the representations of real world things and to qualify these abstractions with properties relating to the specific instances of these representations. So a general representation of a tree stored in a database could have properties such as height and age, the species, the location, or the owner. All of which provide greater information about a particular instance of the data being represented. Now in EFTA 2, students will explore patterns in data and how things can be represented using words, pictures, symbols and diagrams. To represent real world things, we use these various um, symbols. Now, Students might explore the products as they're described on packaging, or gender and road signs, or the symbols used on maps. And there are a whole range of other abstractions that we can make of the real world so that we can more easily communicate and discuss such things. Now students in years three and four will explore how the same data can be represented in many different ways. So a picture of a tree outside their class window provides one representation, while a story of the tree is another. And a map of the schoolyard showing the same tree is another representation. And students' drawings of the tree would be yet others. All of the same thing, but represented in different ways. Now this can be extended by time as well. How was the tree represented when it was young? How might it be represented if it was turned into furniture or paper? Now in five and six, we move on to exploring how different data can be represented by whole numbers and how we use binary numbers to encode this data so that it can be used by digital systems. In particular, students learn about the difference between analog or continuous data and discrete data. Now all digital data is discrete stored as whole values and represented in binary. While analog data, such as time and speed and sound, can be stored digitally, but the analog signal must first be broken up or rounded so that it is in discrete values that can then be digitized. <coughs> now from seven to 10, we use digital systems to structure data. Now this is achieved by storing data in a database. And a database helps us define how different types of data are stored and the relationships between those data. <coughs> now a spreadsheet is a very simple database where the data is structured in columns and we can search and sort data with respect to these columns and define some columns as dates or currency and the data stored in these columns can be checked to match that type of data that we've defined for it, and we call this validation, or data validation. Now larger databases can store information in tables, each like their own individual spreadsheet, but using a specialized programming language that we call a query, 
We can sort, search, and perform calculations on information drawn from several tables. So one table may contain all the contact details of your students, while in another, we have all the assessment results for the students, and in another, all of their behavioural management incidents. Using a structured query language, such as SQL or SQL, we can produce results, such as Sarah Smith scored 25 in her maths test. And we use queries that are a structured series of instructions, a programming language. But the advantage of queries goes well beyond such simple results. We can produce a list of all students who joined the school this semester, that scored less than 50% of the average of their last four assessments, and have been absent more than 10% since they arrived. And we can create many different sorts of queries once we know that language. But this involves gathering data from many different tables, student attendance, student records, teachers' grade books. And the efficiency gained from this is similar to the frustration you may have when you're filling in bureaucratic forms. So instead of having to enter the student's name, age and class and all their other details every time you wish to store some data, such as a behavioural incident report, you would simply enter their name and incident details. The other information would be drawn from other tables using the student's name as a reference without having to record all that information again. Now, while we only really get into developing solutions with this level of sophistication in years 9 and 10, students in younger grades should be becoming familiar with the searching of databases using structured processes. Rather than always relying upon search engine keyword searches that they would be familiar with Google and Bing and other um, more generalised search processes. <coughs> 